Are you struggling to do pull-ups? Stick around because today I have five exercises that are gonna help you get better at pull-ups. Whether you can't do a single pull-up or you're trying to get past 25 pull-ups, these exercises are for you. So let's break this down. First exercise, we are gonna start with the first component of a pull-up, which is the scapular contraction or the contraction of your shoulder blades. So when you're going to pull up, the first thing that we wanna do is pull them shoulder blades back and together and contract the scapulas. So you can practice that by basically just hanging on your pull-up bar and then keeping your arms straight, not engaging the biceps. And all we're doing is trying to pull those shoulder blades back and release. Pull them shoulder blades back as far as we can get and release and do a few sets to 10 every time you're gonna be doing pull-ups, you know, once or twice a week. Next up, we're gonna be doing some negative pull-ups. Now, this is going to focus on the eccentric portion of the pull-up or the pull-up where you're letting yourself down. You're always gonna be stronger in the eccentric portion of a lift than the, the concentric portion. So the eccentric is always where you're, where you're letting the weight down, or in this case, you're hanging and you're letting yourself down. You're gonna be a lot stronger and you can hold that position far better than you're gonna be able to pull yourself up. So we're gonna practice that. Grab yourself a pull-up bar, obviously, and then use like a box or a chair or something so that we can hoist ourselves up into the top portion of the pull-up. So we're gonna hoist ourselves up. We got our bar, our, our chin over the bar or our nose to the bar, and then get your pull-up grip. And then all you're gonna do is hold yourself tight and then let yourself down as slow as possible. And then when you get to the bottom, use your legs, pull yourself back up slow as possible and you want the negative portion of the rep to be at least like three to five seconds and then as you get better try to make that negative longer and longer because that's going to help you improve with the pull-up and even on your way back up instead of using all legs to hoist yourself back up you can start to kind of use some of that back strength and then let it down pull up let it down. And once again, we wanna do a few sets of these and, and you know you can do five, you can do 10 reps. And then like I said, try to increase the time under tension or the time for you to let yourself down as you go along. Next up, we're gonna be doing some full range of motion pull-ups and we're gonna subtract resistance using a 41 inch resistance band. Typically I recommend starting with a band that provides about 40 to 50% of your body weight in resistance. And then all you need to do is wrap it right around the pull-up bar. And then I like to just pull it down, hook it around my knee. You can also pull it all the way down and stand on it with your foot, whatever is most comfortable. I find this one is the most comfortable for me. And then we get into our pull-up position, grabbing the bar and then let yourself all the way down. And then we're contracting those scapulas, pulling ourselves all the way up. <sighs> let it down nice and slow. <sighs> and you'll find you'll get a lot of assistance out of the bottom so it'll be easier to get up. And then once you go through this rep, the further up you go, <sighs> the harder that it's gonna get. And if you wanna know more about how to do banded pull-ups, how to select the bands and all the different ways that you can set them up. We have a full length video on our channel. I'm gonna link it up in the corner here so you can watch that when you get to it. These banded pull-ups are probably the best way to jump in and start doing the full range of motion pull-ups immediately because you can select whatever resistance you want so that you can get started. Another way that we can subtract resistance from a pull-up to make them easier to train and work your way up to being able to do your entire body weight is by doing pull downs. So a pull down is basically a pull up in reverse. I will show you a way to do them here with 41 inch resistance bands. So I take a 41 inch band and I can loop it right over top of the pull up bar. And then all I need is like a bench or something to sit on. I use a pair of clinch band handles as well to kind of give you really a uh, comfortable grip. And it's easy to just pop the handles one on each side. And then all you need to do is sit down into this exercise, get yourself positioned so that your chest is basically vertically underneath of wherever your band is attached to. 
And then it's the same form as a pull-up, but now we're just pulling the resistance down into our chest. So we're gonna pull it down, big squeeze, and then let it up nice and slow. And here we're focusing on the same thing. We're gonna contract those scapulas, pulling it down, and get it down as low as we can get. And then let it up nice and slow. You don't wanna use a lot of momentum here because we're trying to isolate those lat muscles and the muscles in the back and in our arms to be able to execute this pull down properly and then train us to do pull ups and get stronger at pull ups. So as you go through here, you can use heavier resistance bands. You do a few sets, kind of pyramid that weight up just like you would with free weights. Start with, you know, 10 to 15 reps, drop down to, you know, eight to 10 reps for your second set and eight to 10 reps for your third set and try to raise that resistance on each set so that you can work through and build strength, build power. And as you get heavier with this, you're gonna notice that it's gonna start pulling you up and out of the seat. If you have a rack like this, the best way that I found to do these is to put a barbell basically right at, uh, right at the right height on top of your quads so the, and put weight on the barbell so that the bar will hold you down into your seat while you're doing the pullouts. Last exercise, we're gonna do some inverted rows here. Now this exercise is kind of in between the pull down and pull ups because you're gonna be holding, basically resisting your entire body weight, but you're gonna support some of that body weight with your feet. So you're gonna be subtracting some of that resistance, but the angles are changed a little bit. So it's still a, a more difficult lift, I would say, than the pull downs, um, but not quite as difficult as the pull up. But we're gonna be using the same muscles and it's gonna help give you another exercise to help build that strength for your pull ups and in your back. So to set this up, I take a bar or just anything, yeah, anything like a bar that you can hang on to that's right around waist height. This works easy in, in a rack if you have one. And then all you gotta do is get down underneath that bar, set your hands at roughly whatever grip you like to use for the pull-ups. You can vary the grips if you want. Um, I prefer kind of just outside shoulder width. And then you're gonna get into like a plank position. So we're gonna keep our legs straight, keep our core pulled in tight, and then we're gonna just pull ourselves up as high as we can get, and then let it down nice and slow. <sighs> Exhale on the way up, big squeeze, and inhale on the way down. And keeping your legs straight is probably the most difficult uh, way to do this because it's the longest lever arm. If you need a little bit less resistance, you can always bend your knees a little bit, make that lever arm shorter, and then you can work through these and pound out the reps. Same thing as before, I'd encourage you to do a few sets of these whenever you're doing your back day or your pull-up day, and that'll just help you to really fully kind of build strength and keep everything balanced as you, as you grow and progress. At the end of the day, the only way that you're gonna to continue to progress and grow is by continuously doing more exercises and increasing that load. So I encourage you to throw these exercises into your back day or your pull-up day and do them at least once or twice a week and every week try to beat what you did last week. And I guarantee you, if you follow that structure, you will get better at pull-ups, whether you can't do any or you're trying to get to 25, 50, 100 pull-ups. These exercises, we will help you get there. Like what you saw today, be sure to smash that like button. Also, I encourage you to check out the on-screen video links. We have tons of content on this channel just like this to help you get better in fitness regardless of your goals. Furthermore, if you need any of the resistance bands or accessories shown in the video today, head over to clenchfitness.com. We will hook you up and thank you for watching.